So we have around 45 minutes to discuss about the, the topic of the policy, the platforms and, and the city. And uh, the, the first thing that we should be doing is a, a quick round of introductions. So if you can just briefly uh, introduce who you are and what is your, what is your work. And also I would ask uh, what collaborative platform, whatever you consider collaborative platform, have you used and you want to highlight of the last let's say, six months or something like that? So I can okay. start right by Benedetta. Okay, thank you very much. Good evening. I am uh, Benedetta Brighenti and uh, I am an engineer. But uh, I am here because I am not only an engineer, but I am also a politician. I am a member of the Committee of the Regions uh, in Brussels, so an institutional, an uh, European institution. And I am here to talk with you about uh, this important phenomenon and how to find the right solution for do the right law. And um, what about uh, sharing economy for me? For sure, uh, I use a lot uh, Airbnb. And uh, so it's normal for me to have this, this different behavior uh, when I move uh, from my house in Italy. And, uh, but I try also to use uh, um, this new way uh, also when I move myself. So I, uh, I used a lot uh, Uber, for example. And I think that uh, in my most important behavior during my day, I try to find new solution. And usually uh, the, the solution in sharing economy are the most common for me. Thank you. Mayo. Hello, I am Mayo Fuster. Uh, I am um, advisor of uh, Barcelona City Council of uh, Collaborative Economy Policies. I am responsible of Barcola, which is Barcelona Colabora. It's the group who lead the action of the City Council of Col in Collaborative Economy. I am also a um, director of a research uh, group in uh, com call it Demons on Commons Production at the uh, uh, Open University of Catalonia. I am faculty affiliated also at the Berman Center, Harvard. As, but I am uh, a very proud mother, uh, an experimental mother, uh, into bringing collaborative values to my child. And uh, do you use some collaborative platform with your kids already? Yes. <laughs> uh, one is I really use um, a, a, a platform which uh, helps exchange uh, toys. So you bring a box of, uh, uh, full of toys and then you receive every two months a renewable uh, box of toys, that's something I use. Also, um, uh, services of co-caring co co of childs, uh, which in Barcelona is growing, like cooperative of, of fathers and mothers who for the taking care of childs. Something I also use is um, the services of uh, a cooperative, it's called communias.es, which is a cooperative for the management of uh, the properties. So property manage, managers in the old fashion uh, tend to not be very help, like solving some of the elements of the buildings, but uh, not helping uh, the neighbors to cooperate between them and exchange. So this is a new way of um, managers of uh, property. And the last one is uh, uh, Wikipedia. I use, I am a Wikipedia, I use Wikipedia a lot, and I, but I, I not want to say about Wikipedia because it's the fifth more visited website in the world, I'm very successful with five million dollars budget, but because it's an example of a corporation, because Wikipedia was a corporation, it was a, actually a porn content corporation that decided in order to succeed to become a social enterprise. So here we have an example in which a co corporation of collaborative economy, in order to succeed and keep maintaining and not putting risk his business model, be, uh, uh, take the social economy path which uh, favor the democratic governance of the community. So that's why I like it. Thank you. I've been contributing, I'm uh, donating money also to Wikipedia on the last, on the last round. So thank you. Renato, can you explain? Renato Gagliano from the city of Milan. I'm director of a department in charge of, uh, let's say, economic development, innovation, uh, smart city. And uh, for another activity, uh, we called it uh, Milano In, uh, like Milano Innovation and Inclusion. Uh, under these uh, two umbrellas, uh, smart city and uh, Milano In, uh, we deal with um, sharing economy and uh, in, in two ways, uh, let's say. One uh, is more 
on uh, policy rules uh, and uh, uh, the other one uh, is more focused on activities uh, and projects uh, and uh, if uh, we have time uh, I can explain what uh, we are doing uh, uh, in Milan. And what platform have you used in the last six months in oh, uh, um, the city <laughs> or okay. traveling? Um, let's say we, we started uh, with the, the some policy, policy activities. Uh, we launched uh, a public register for uh, operators uh, and experts uh, in uh, sharing economy. More than uh, 100 uh, players uh, are listed uh, in our register. Mostly of them uh, are companies, uh, enterprises for profit, and they uh, are big big players like uh, Airbnb, as uh, everyone knows, uh, but also uh, very small activities uh, like organization uh, um, managing uh, what we call the social streets. And in between uh, there are lots of uh, actors or players uh, in different, uh, working in uh, different fields. Then uh, we have a specific uh, place for them. Uh, we launched uh, two public calls in order to finance uh, startups uh, in field in, in the sharing uh, economy field. Thank you. We'll talk more about the details of, of what you're doing in Milan later on. Patrick, uh, your company has been named already almost by everybody. So <laughs> I've never used Airbnb. What is this thing? <laughs> Uh, I'm Patrick Robinson. I head the public policy team for Airbnb. Um, I and my team spend our days and some of our nights as well talking to people like my fellow panelists about home sharing, about the Airbnb community, and negotiating and pushing for the kinds of sensible, fair regulations that Guillaume was talking about not 10 minutes ago. Uh, as well as being a power Airbnb user, um, I uh, am a member of my local car club in uh, London. Only the most uh, insane person in London owns their own car. Um, and uh, I uh, borrow a car by the hour, potter about. I'm perfectly happy. And that, and that in fact, was my first introduction to the sharing economy. Uh, always the, the first experience. Uh, so, Benedetta, I think with the examples that we, we, we've heard uh, and also from the previous um, presentations, we see that the collaborative economy topic, we know it's very difficult to, to define. It's very broad. We've heard from Wikipedia to companies who are managing at local level or, or local groups. So from the European Union, I know you, there has been a lot of research. What has been the evolution for the last month on, on this topic? No? No, you get that. Thank you. Thank you very much. So you are very lucky because the history is very short. Okay. And so you are very <laughs> lucky because uh, I am the rapporteur of the um, own initiative uh, um, uh, report uh, of the Committee of the Region, region on the Sharing Economy. Uh, is an opinion important, but is a own opinion. And the meaning of this is that uh, there wasn't uh, no one rule or no one uh, institutional documents about this topic. And this is fundamental because I closed my work in December, so uh, six months ago. And so it's very important to uh, know that uh, in the European institution, the first institutional document uh, is the document of the do Committee of the Regions, the document uh, that uh, the local go government, uh, in which the local government try to explain uh, what we think about uh, this kind uh, of uh, topic. And uh, I think it's important because uh, you know now that the first document comes from uh, the base, the cities. And this is fundamental for me because um, from the European level, uh, from the Commission level, it's very difficult to understand the, this phenomenon. And uh, I want to also to, um, to tell you uh, a, a, nice, uh, a nice moment uh, because uh, one uh, year ago, uh, when uh, the committee decided uh, to write this kind of uh, opinion, uh, very dangerous from a political point of view, very dangerous, they started to, cho to show the, uh, the rapporteur, the people who um, have the responsibility to write this kind of document. And they chosen me 
very strange shows because I am young, I am Italian, I am a girl, mm, a strange mix. But uh, they mm, told me that I could be the right, p uh, the right person because I am young. And so I can understand what uh, in our life uh, um, is the meaning of the sharing economy because our life uh, completely changed with this kind of phenomenon. And I think it, it was a very great uh, uh, choice because I can understand directly on my skin and so for me it's important. Now, uh, from a European point of view, we have uh, something uh, inside the digital single market from the uh, European Commission and uh, the European Parliament. And I want uh, only to, um, uh, to read uh, you some very easy, and you are uh, for, the uh, for the second time uh, lucky because it's very short, um, the, point of the, the official point of view of the single digi the digital market, because I think it's important you understand uh, directly uh, the situation. They um, tell us that uh, um, is a greater choice and lower prices for consumers, uh, growth opportunity for innovative startups and existing European companies, uh, sharing economy increases employment and benefit employees, and allows resources to be used more efficiently, thereby increasing productivity and sustainability. This kind of concept are also in the Committee of the Region Opinion. And so you can understand that from a political point of view, we have a very important and good opinion of the sharing economy. But uh, I, want to, uh, I wanted to explain uh, so in, in this directly way the point of view of the um, Commission because uh, uh, I want to underline you that uh, uh, you can always find uh, commercial and consumer aspects, uh, but you don't uh, find uh, non-commercial and common-based approach. In our document, we try to underline these uh, things because it's fundamental, it's very important. Uh, and. Um, I also want to tell you that uh, uh, starting an important law from a national government, that is uh, the first one, and this the law comes from the Italian government, in which uh, you can find uh, always uh, consumer aspect, uh, commercial aspect, uh, uh, on-demand aspect. And uh, um, there was another one, uh, um, uh, there was on the, on a, um, another one the point that, uh, that, uh, uh, um, that also the council, the most important institutional level, the council with the premier or the, um, uh, the minister or the minister of the European government, um, uh, had an important meeting at the end of January in which uh, the Dutch presidency analyzed and underlined that uh, the sharing economy is something absolutely uh, alive, real, important for our life, and that we must, uh, as soon as possible, try to exchange uh, our point of view, our, uh, uh, our um, uh, experiment, uh, and this is very important because the Council is the most important. So it's a very, um, come si dice, una storia, una storia giovane, it's very young history, mm -hmm. because I tell you uh, something uh, happened in the last uh, six months. But uh, something I think very important because all the levels start to do something. Okay, no, it's, uh, thank you for the over overview because it's always very complex to understand what the Europe is doing, I mean, for, for me. So thank you for trying to summarize it. And, and Renato, from this European vision, how do you arrive to the city level, the practicality? You now you start explaining, you know, we've seen in the matrix from the Duncan presentation uh, before, that not, ev not everything are companies. We've seen from the comments from, from Benedetta that the more commons oriented and non-commercial activities are left out. Maybe at the European Commission you can do that, but at city level you cannot do that. You have like international companies operating in your city. You have, cooper uh, you have local startups that maybe are trying to, to grow. You have cooperatives and, and, and social companies. And you have groups of individuals that through a Facebook group or a WhatsApp group, they are sharing something. Mm, how, how have you been dealing with all this diversity in Milan? No? You explained you created a committee of experts. 
Uh, yes. Uh, first of all, uh, we had this. We launched uh, this idea of having uh, a public register of uh, operators or players uh, divided uh, in two sessions. One is uh, the operators uh, and the other the experts. Uh, there are lots of people working uh, also in the field of uh, as experts. Uh, I mean, uh, um, people from the academia, experts uh, for uh, training, uh, for consultancy and so on. And then you have uh, players uh, doing something real, uh, doing uh, activities or services in which uh, you can find uh, big multinational companies uh, and uh, small companies, uh, SMEs, uh, uh, startups, uh, um, citizens uh, starting uh, new activities. So it's very difficult to manage uh, uh, in the same way uh, with all of them. Um, because uh, also it changed uh, the, the focus. Uh, I mean, uh, a big uh, multinational platform uh, has the, uh, the target of uh, improving uh, its market. Uh, so uh, we have to deal with them mostly negotiating something. Uh, which could be uh, activities uh, in favor of the community or of specific uh, communities. Like uh, with uh, Airbnb, we signed uh, an agreement. Uh, we recognized Airbnb as one of the major players uh, and uh, is also linked to the fiscal aspects uh, for the tourism and so on. But uh, with uh, Airbnb, we were able to sign this agreement in order to launch uh, social activities. Uh, uh, for instance, uh, the first project we have launched with them is uh, a, a project uh, uh, in favor of uh, relatives uh, or family coming to Milan uh, in to, uh, because they have uh, a person uh, uh, in an hospital, so they have to spend uh, days uh, in Milan uh, and uh, with the host community of Airbnb, we reached this agreement. The host cut 50% uh, of the price uh, and the other 50% is paid by uh, the platform, by Airbnb. So the city is able to provide uh, a free of charge service, uh, an accommodation service uh, for this group of people, which is uh, very important. Another aspect uh, that we are starting with, uh, um, with the Airbnb is uh, some uh, training courses uh, for the digital divide, uh, specifically uh, in uh, some areas, uh, older people uh, and so on. So with big company, you have uh, to deal uh, in two ways, the rules uh, and uh, negotiating something in favor of the city. In the other cases, uh, the role uh, of, the, uh, of the city has uh, to be completely different. Uh, the city has to push, uh, to help, uh, to accompany these uh, new activities uh, providing some facilities. And these facilities could be economic facilities, but not only economic. We can also help them in order to build local communities, providing spaces, providing, uh, um, giving to them some uh, advertising uh, or uh, spreading the knowledge, uh, the news that they exist and uh, which are the services provided uh, by these uh, players. Another target uh, are startups. Uh, startups needs, uh, as uh, in this field, uh, as uh, uh, all the startups need different things, uh, probably some help uh, in, uh, in the phase of the business planning, uh, uh, some financial helps, uh, uh, places like incubator, accelerator, specialized uh, in this field. And uh, we have uh, right now uh, 
uh, eight uh, uh, incubator accelerators uh, providing services uh, to all of them. Uh, so there is a, a mix uh, of activities. Thank you. That was a very complete and educational answer, at least for me, and I hope also for, for the audience, because it helps to, to frame things. Patrick, a difficult, difficult one for you. <laughs> uh, now we've, we've, we, I follow, actually I follow the public policy blog that Airbnb has. Uh, I get all the, all, the, all the articles and you're publishing a lot of reports on the economic impact, uh, positive in, in many of the cities and neighborhoods. But on the other hand, I also follow the news and we see a lot of demonstrations for people complaining for some of the activities of Airbnb in different regions of, of different cities and so on. So there is this paradigm on where development becomes uh, potentially, I know the word is complicated, uh, gentrification. So, and, and how can we f find, um, no, how can we, can we make a difference between the two of them? Because it's, it's always complicated. So maybe you have a hint on that? I think the answer is that, that we need to, to talk about this stuff. I think where we've made the most uh, progress with governments over the last uh, three or four years, it's because we have been able to sit down and have dialogue and find partnerships and negotiate over things. Um, these are really, really complex issues. And I think data is without doubt becoming, you know, the, the, the new battleground for uh, companies like ours and, and cities. Uh, there are plenty of people out there uh, scraping the websites, making their own conclusions, jumping to conclusions, publishing stuff that is misleading or paints uh, an inaccurate picture. And, you know, I think, speaking candidly, I think we probably used to complain about that a bit too much without actually doing anything about it. And I think what we are doing now over time is becoming more transparent, is finding ways to share more data, both privately and publicly, uh, in a way to, to inform the debate. Um, we don't get to decide what the laws are in, in any of these cities and these markets. Governments do. Uh, it is incumbent on governments to do that on the basis of evidence and not emotion. And I think the more we put out there, um, uh, uh, the better. But crucially, the more research that gets commissioned independently that looks at difficult issues like housing affordability and gentrification that is independent and is informed by the facts rather than emotions, we will be better off doing it. I mean, it staggers me um, that there is so much debate about uh, the impact of short-term rentals, not just Airbnb, short-term rentals generally, on housing affordability, but there is so little evidence and so little research about that is a factor versus everything else that we know is going on in our busy cities. Cities not building enough affordable housing for their people. Cities that are becoming magnets for migration, both in, you know, internal mag migration within countries, but also international migration too. Um, the aging population and what the dynamic is between people who are living longer and the availability of properties, these are all hugely important things. And, we could certainly be publishing tons of stuff on that. We have done in places like San Francisco and Berlin. But it seems so much better if the governments and the elected officials who are supposed to be representing the interests of their citizens are also doing that. We, we try really hard not to have a confrontational attitude with, with, with governments. Um, unfortunately, you know, you happen to live in Barcelona. That is without doubt the most difficult conversation we are having anywhere in Europe right now. <laughs> Okay, so we jumped to Barcelona. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mayo, can you explain? Yeah, because we've heard from, from Patrick and other people that Barcelona is a controversial place for the collaborative economy. Um, although, although we share is very active there, uh, we are trying also with Barcola uh, helping on that. So maybe you can explain what is special. We have a new government since almost one year now. Mm -hmm. uh, so maybe you can explain what has been the approach of the new government of Barcelona for the collaborative economy, especially oriented to the commons. And Thank you. So, first to say that uh, Barcelona is a great place for a collaborative economy. It in is. The sense of, uh, it has been uh, recognized uh, by the European Commission, like uh, in, in 2014, the European Commission did a study about uh, which are the 10 most uh, promising and, and successful experiences of collaborative economy. Um, ten of the, from 10 in Europe, three are in Barcelona. One is Goteo, which is about crowdfunding. Another one is Wifinet, which is the worldwide uh, largest uh, wireless uh, community uh, network. 
And the, the other one is Smart Citizen Kits, which is a, a, a tool for open data uh, sharing between citizens. Uh, recently, the peer-to-peer -peer value project, also a European project, did a, a mapping of uh, initiatives of collaborative economy and in Barcelona uh, identified 1,300 uh, experiences. So we have a very significant ones and very spread uh, uh, scene of uh, initiative. Also historically, uh, uh, we have all uh, um, a very important uh, tradition on this. So it's a great place to uh, bring initiatives and uh, to connect. Uh, second is that uh, I'm going to present what is the, the approach of the Barcelona City Council. First, I have to say that we have a new government as uh, um, um, Albert has told us, uh, which was a, it's a government uh, by Barcelona in Comú, which means Barcelona in the common. This is a, a citizen's initiative, which was created only one year before we were able to win the elections. Uh, it, never in history, uh, something uh, organizing only in one year and citizens based without uh, an, uh, media power, economical power, judicial power, has been able to gain a global city. So it's really, really exceptional uh, situation. Certainly, uh, people with a very, uh, a very powerful uh, 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 corporations or very powerful uh, economical players are, are surprised. We can say they find it controversial. You know, that citizens create initiatives to gain uh, the governance of their city. Uh, so this is the, 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 the govern, government in the city, and we, I want to present our approach to collaborative economy in four points. First is, regulation about collaborative economy should be developed in a collaborative manner. How are we are going to do this in a top-down? approach. So basically we say, okay, let's make a co-creation of public policies about what do we want to do regarding collaborative economy. So we have a, a started a process of co-creation of public policies and this means several things. First, we created a group, it's called Barcola, for Barcelona Colabora, in which it's a co-working group between the, um, the municipality and the sector in the city. So we have 20 initiatives that are part of this uh, Barcola group. One of them is uh, WeShare, in which we uh, advise and define the strategic planning of the city council on um, uh, 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 collaborative economy. And this is the way to go also because there are many expertise uh, around collaborative economy. It's a very complex issue. And the city council and the public administration doesn't have all this expertise. The solutions is, like the sector has a much better solution that we can have in the uh, public administration. Also, it's a way to building power for developing joint actions between the collaborative economy sector in the city and the city council. So first, we created Barcola. Then we started a process of defining the public policies for the next four years of the city council on, on uh, uh, collaborative economy and in general. And I started doing a diagnostic with the sector. Then we uh, uh, put the diagnostic and po policy recommendation in online tools in order to be open to the citizens also to comment it. And we end up with uh, organizing an event. It was uh, late uh, March, called it Procommons in which the event was set up in order to define the policies of the city council and we uh, end up with 120 public policies that was then put it online and the citizens can go to the, play, to the online site and say, okay, I think this is really a good idea and this I don't support it. So uh, there was also like a participative democracy kind of uh, channel. And this is important because we need to overcome like the idea of only experts or or only politicians to define the policies. We need to go into participative uh, processes uh, mechanism. Second characteristic of the approach of uh, Barcelona City Council on these issues is common centric approach in the sense of, for us, uh, uh, I, uh, I think it's very valuable the, the, the opinion of, of the repertoire, like saying it's important to different uh, models in collaborative economy is not the same 
a uh, Uber than a group of solidarity between neighbors on time banking is not the same thing. That's already a step. Uh, but for, for us, it's not that there is a, like an economical model and a social model. No, th these are two economical models. And it's about what economy do we want? And uh, uh, for us, the reference and the, the type of economical development that we want to uh, push for is the, economic, the, the, the social economy, the cooperative tradition, in which actually Barcelona have a long uh, history. And this is not a, like about uh, rhetoric. This is a very real uh, situation. Like to, in 2008, uh, we uh, go through the, the, the collapse of the economical system, the greater collapse of the uh, economical system we have uh, ever had in the history of, of the current uh, uh, economical system. So we really need, it is now the moment to think what economy do we want? And actually there are running uh, 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 models based on more democratic and uh, more less uh, uh, inequalities uh, growing like cooperative uh, social enterprise and all of this. Let's go into that direction. Let's also think how big corporations can go into corp democratization. And there are big corporations that are already thinking in those terms. And, um, and so uh, uh, for the Barcelona City Council, the reference is how from the City Council we can push and promote a commons oriented uh, uh, social economy uh, corporate uh, 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 model. The third characteristic is that it's a, we think into a, into a commons public partnership in the sense of we want to overcome the model of a stakeholder that was defined for the internet governance. In the internet governance, the model was public, pr private, and civil society. We think this has bring the corporatization and the domination of big players in the internet. So now we think it's important that economical interest does not define the political on this matter. So we make this partnership public, commons, and the fourth element is that we are experimenting how to uh, define, the, uh, organize the public services. But the idea is not now, after the, the several decades of privatization of public policies, just that we are arrived to government, want to define public uh, services and promote them, and we just centralize everything. It's not about recentralization of the public services, but it's about through the actors of the collaborative economy move from the privatization of public services to the communication of public services involving collaborative economy uh, initiatives and act activating the citizens uh, producers into the, the development of the uh, public services, but without entering into privatization uh, manners. Thank you. Good summary. I recommend to go to the website www.procommuns.net where you can find a detailed policy of what uh, Maya was explaining, uh, which as you see, it's, a, it's a, I think a very advanced approach what the Barcelona city is taking and sometimes it's difficult also to understand for a, for a lot of people. So linking a little bit with that and I, now we have like uh, eight minutes left for, for a few group of questions. I would, I would like to, to have debate uh, now at the, at the end. Uh, and, and one of the examples, and, and here in WeShare, we always talk about platform cooperativism, open source, commons. We've heard about this, maybe it's familiar for the audience, the concept of Muni BNB, the municipal BNB. Um, maybe the, 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 the cities or, or, the, or the regions could develop an open source software like WordPress that cities could install, like download uh, the Muni BNB for my city and operate it. So far, maybe we've been talking about that for two years, never happened. Why? What's the problem for, for this thing to happen? Because uh, I don't know if, if from, from, from a BNB experience, <laughs> you, you know how complex well, it is to run a, an operation like yeah. a BNB. I so. mean, these are not difficult. I mean, sorry, these are not easy businesses to run. These are not easy platforms to operate. And um, I think the other thing is about a mindset. I think we're seeing across Europe, there are a number of cities that are thinking very differently about the way they deliver public services, the way that they interact with citizens. They are more citizen-centric. Um, but actually, in, in my experience, it tends to be pockets within city councils. It tends to be champions who find it hard to get traction with other colleagues, or find it hard to find the money, or find it difficult to get through to the right people. And therefore, the great idea is there, but it sort of fizzles out because the city is not necessarily behind it wholeheartedly. 
I mean, I think the other issue is that we talk about cities a lot. Cities sit within regions. The regions sit within countries. The country sits within the European Union over here. And the level of complexity in figuring out what is feasible and not feasible at all of those levels is, is really difficult. It's difficult as a private actor. It's very bewildering if you're, if you're a, an NGO or somebody who is a very small-scale startup. I mean, for all the great work that is going on in certain pockets of Barcelona City Council, the Catalonian government thinks very different things about some of these collaborative models. And unfortunately for some of us, it's not the City Council that decides the laws that you know, these business models exist within. So if cities are going to be pushing certain business models or introducing their own versions of Airbnb or their own versions of lift chair or their own versions of all of these, there needs to be some joined up government elsewhere where if food banking is becoming a very important part of a city's municipal structure, that the regional government or the national government isn't prohibiting that on health and safety grounds, for example. So. There, there needs to be quite a systemic look at this stuff. I think that may be one of the reasons why it's not yeah. flown. No, I, I, as you said, it's a very complex topic. So any other reactions also from, from the committee? Of, uh, I think it's a matter of time. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we are only have been in one year. And uh, this is actually one of the proposals which emerged from the Procommons uh, public uh, recommendations to actually promote... Uh, uh, money Airbnb, but actually is not think in terms of the city council to be the 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 um, pro, uh, provider of the platform, but to build like um, a, a public investment with uh, citizens uh, uh, um, uh, management of the resource. And next week there is a meeting in Amsterdam about initiatives in this direction. So uh, I think it's uh, getting track. I don't think it's only a matter of time. Uh, it's uh, al also a matter of, uh, uh, like, s uh, 10 years ago, we uh, were talking about uh, sustainable development, and one of the pillars was the institutional sustainability, which means uh, having uh, the same approach uh, at the different institutional levels. Uh, so, uh, when you talk about uh, social eating uh, and uh, you enter in the houses, private houses, uh, some of the rules uh, of the eating uh, of the restaurants comes from the European legislation. So you have to enter in the different uh, competences of the different institutional levels uh, in order to have uh, a sustainable way of uh, approaching a new paradigm because the sharing economy is a new economic paradigm so we have to list it all of them and, and any specific uh, ideas on how to do that how to cope? we've seen already just in a, in a relatively small panel very different approaches by different opinions uh, but I think the sharing economy or collaborative economy is there how could cities cooperate, maybe maybe through the committee or maybe through through other means? Or sh and I'm not sure if, if it's the cities that need to cooperate or we need to cooperate sharing the solutions directly, and the cities and the citizens will will manage like a GitHub of uh, eco sharing economy or collaborative economy solutions that we can download to our cities. I don't know. Yep. Uh, how, how can we? What are your ideas on this uh, orchestration? Okay. Um, no, I want uh, only first of all. To um, uh, to add something uh, uh, about uh, the how the uh, the situation is that now because uh, you must try to do an exercise with me now a very difficult exercise because you try to transform yourself uh, in a politician for a uh, um, little time <laughs> because it's dangerous <laughs> something dangerous but you must understand that uh, in the behavior inside the city there is is not only something uh, who um, became in this way during the time, but uh, there is all the history of the citizen, there is all the history of the land, there is all the, all the history of the regions. And so it's very difficult from a political point of view, if you, if you, are, if you are a mayor, it's very difficult to understand uh, how to uh, change the historical process uh, 
um, 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 risk, uh, in this situation in which you have the sharing economy that run to you. It's very difficult beca because your first, uh, your first um, uh, goal is to respect and protect the citizen. So it's very difficult and uh, we need time because we are politicians. Usually we um, make some uh, mistake uh, and so we must uh, understand, we must try to respect all the level. And, uh, but uh, um, for the citizen and for the future, because in the future you will uh, find the story uh, continues the story and so it's important to no mistake about uh, this kind of change of our internal structure and I think it uh, it, uh, it uh, I am agree with Mayor for sure because uh, uh, we are changing uh, maybe um, lentamente Slowly, very slowly, but we are changing because in Italy we have a lot of uh, good ex uh, ex uh, exercise and experience and uh, uh, for sure uh, we must now work a lot uh, in, a tool, in, in, a very, in, uh, in a very real uh, talk uh, with the in the different level because uh, I was in my with my president with the president of my region Emilia Romagna in Italia one month ago and I was talking with him and uh, I will uh, I was saying um, Stefano, but uh, we must absolutely speak about sharing economy. We, we, you must, with your council, um, build a law about sharing economy. And Stefano Bonaccini, the president of the Emilia Romagna, uh, answered me, but uh, we are the collaboration because Emilia Romagna is the land of cooperativism. And so uh, he didn't understand at the first time what I am meaning because it's difficult for him to translate. And so I think this time is very important because the politician might analy must analyze in the right way everything. And um, I think that uh, we are in a very important moment because uh, you know that in the in last six months we are changing our point of view. And now I am very proud because the next week in Brussels there is a meeting inside the committee of the regions and with the committee understand that it is important uh, to speak together. So we invited uh, the most important city in, uh, in Europe. We, uh, I will be in um, Brussels with Mayo and also uh, with Renato. I, I'm sorry, but with no uh, <laughs> Airbnb, but... Um, not only, invited. Uh, yeah, not invited <laughs> because only city. I'll gate crash it. I'll gate crash it. <laughs> only cities. And we want to start the start point uh, in which we want to, from an institutional point of view, uh, exchange cool. our experience. Yeah, that, that, that's a, a good step on the... Uh, uh, we run out of time. Actually, we are over over our time. Uh, there was there were some questions left. We will follow up with some of the speakers in the Maif terrace if it's not raining there. So we'll, we'll, we'll check it out. Thank you very much. I think it was a rich debate. Uh, thank you for your contributions. Please a big applause to the to the panel. Thank you.